Module 2, Networks and Decision Mathematics. Question 1. Fensdale High School has six buildings. The network below shows these buildings represented by vertices. The edges of the network represent the paths between the buildings. Part A. Which building in the school can be reached directly from all other buildings? For this, we are going to look for the vertex of degree 5. By inspection, we can see that the office is a vertex of degree 5. Part B. A school tour is to start and finish at the office, visiting each building only once. Part I. What is the mathematical term for this route? That is a Hamiltonian cycle. Part 2i. Draw in a possible route for this school tour on the diagram below. There are two such options and these are shown below. Question 2. Fensdale High School offers students a choice of four sports. Football, tennis, athletics, and basketball. The bipartite graph below illustrates the sports that each student can play. Each student will be allocated to only one sport. Part A. Complete the table below by allocating the appropriate sport to each student. To solve this question, we are going to start with athletics because there is only one arrow going into athletics, and that is from Marco. So, athletics will be allocated to Marco. We can now erase the other two arrows going out from Marco, and we can see that basketball has only one arrow coming from one. So, one will be allocated basketball. By deleting the other arrow from one, we can see that tennis can be allocated only to Blake. And of course, the last one is going to be football, which is going to be allocated to Carly. Part B. The school medley relay team consists of four students, Anita, Imani, Jordan, and Lola. The medley relay race is a combination of four different sprinting distances, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, and 400 meters run in that order. The following table shows the best time in seconds for each student for each sprinting distance. The school will allocate each student to one sprinting distance in order to minimize the total time taken to complete the race. To which distance should each student be allocated? Write your answers in the table below. To solve this question, we are going to use the Hungarian algorithm. For this, we are going to use step 1, find the smallest value in each row. That is, 13.3 is the smallest value in row 1, 14.5 is the smallest value in row 2, 13.3 is the smallest value in row 3, and 15.2 is the smallest value in row 4. Step 2. Subtract the smallest value in a row from all the values in that row. And now we have the new values in the table. Step 3. Find the smallest value in each column. That is 0 in column 1, 14 in column 2, 46.4 in column 3, and 72.7 .7 in column 4. Step 4. Subtract the smallest value in a column from all the values in that column. And this will give us these new values. We are going to draw horizontal and vertical lines to cover all the zeros. Step 5. Find the smallest value in the table that is not a zero, and that is 1.1. Step 6. Add this value to the number where the lines cross. And then subtract this value from all the uncovered values. And this gives us the new values in the table. 
Again, we are going to draw horizontal and vertical lines to cover all the zeros. Now, there are four lines that cover the zeros, which correspond to the four options. For this reason, we can now start and allocate the sprinting distances. From column three, there is only one zero, which means that Lola is going to run the 300 meters. In column four, the only zero remaining is for Anita. So Anita is going to run the 400 meters. Similarly, Imani is going to run the 200 meters and Jordan is going to run the 100 meters. Question three. Fensdale High School is planning to renovate its gymnasium. This project involves 12 activities, A to L. The directed network below shows these activities and their completion times in weeks. The minimum completion time for the project is 35 weeks. Part A. How many activities are on the critical path? For this, we need to determine the critical path. So we start with the early starting time, zero, for activity A, and then zero plus two gives us two, the early starting time for activity B, and then two plus four equals six, which are the, the start early starting times for activities C and D. We continue like this until we get to activity F. Here, we have to calculate 11 plus 3, which is 14, coming from activity E, and 6 plus 9 equals 15, coming from activity D. And we are going to choose the highest value, which is 15. The early starting time for activities G and H are 16, because it's 15 plus 1, which is 16. The early starting time for activity J is 16 plus 4, which is 20, and the same for activity I. When we get to activity K, we have to do 20 plus 2 equals 22, coming from activity I, and 16 plus 5 equals 21, coming from activity H. Again, we choose the highest value because going from left to right, we always choose the highest value, and that is 22. We continue like this until we finish. So the project, the minimum completion time for the project is 35 weeks. We are now going to go backwards for the latest starting times. So now we are going to subtract 35 minus 6 equals 29, 29 minus 7 equals 22. For activity I, we have 22 minus 2 equals 20. For activity H, 22 minus 5 equals 17. For activity J, we have 29 minus 4 equals 25. Now, for activity G, we need to look at J and I. So 25 minus 4 equals 21, and 20 minus 4 equals 16. So this time we are going to choose the lowest value. So going from right to left, we choose the smallest value. For activity F, again, we have 16 minus 1 equals 15, coming from activity G, and 17 minus 1 equals 16, coming from activity H. Again, we choose the, the lowest value, which is 15. And we continue like this until we finish back at the start.
Now, to determine the critical path, remember we need those boxes where the two numbers are the same. So the early starting time is the same as the later starting time. And the activities on the critical path are A, B, D, F, G, I, K, and L. That is eight activities. Part B. Determine the latest start time of activity E. We have already done that, so that is 12 weeks. Part C. Which activity has the longest float time? Remember that the float time is the latest starting time minus the early starting time. By inspection, we can see that activity J has the longest float time. It is possible to reduce the completion time for activities C, D, G, H, and K by employing more workers. Part D. The completion time for each of these five activities can be reduced by a maximum of two weeks. What is the minimum time in weeks that the renovation project could take? So we are going to reduce the five activities by two hours. So three weeks for activity C, seven for activity D, two for activity G, three for activity H, and five for activity K. We are now going to recalculate the early starting time and the later starting time for this project. And that gives us the minimum time of 29 weeks. Part E. The reduction in completion time for each of these five activities will incur an additional cost to the school. The table below shows the five activities that can have their completion times reduced and associated weekly cost in dollars. The completion time for each of these five activities can be reduced by a maximum of two weeks. Fensdale High School requires the overall completion time for the renovation project to be reduced by four weeks at minimum cost. Complete the table below showing the reductions in individual activity completion times that would achieve this. We are going to start with activity C. If we reduce activity C only, that is not going to affect the final time because the earliest starting time for activity F is 15 and that comes from activity D which is 9 plus 6. Also to reduce activity C is more expensive than reducing activity D. So let's start by reducing activity D by one week and see what happens. So this reduces the completion time by one week. If we reduce activity D by another week, this will not affect the overall completion time because the earliest starting time for activity F will be still 14 coming from activities C and E. So what we are going to do next, we are going to reduce activity G by one week and see what happens. Now that reduces the finish time by a further one week. So let's reduce activity G by another week. So in total by two weeks. At this point, we need to reduce activity H by one week. And the last one, the only activity we can reduce now is K by another week. So we have zero weeks for activity C, one week for activity D, two weeks for activity G, one week for activity H, and one week for activity K. 